Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. In terms of physical qualities, you you would like somebody who's, I would say, more traditional in the sense, um, not wearing like uh, look, <laughs> looking like <laughs> a uh, yeah. Um, I, I feel like, like you a, don't you don't yeah. want somebody like <laughs> walking Being around nice. and uh, you know like I, I mean like you know like we we know how modern women dress. Uh, mm-hmm. We know how young girls dress um, yeah. because that's what the world says. That's that's the style, and I and I get that. You know, like you want to be trendy but mm-hmm. you know you want to don't go be trendy be try be, be timeless yeah, you know time don't be trendy be timeless time. and age gracefully a story that alex gave is this older man this young girl comes into the shop trying to basically oh, exposing yeah, today, everything yeah. and this older man sits her down and he says do you know about like all the you know amazing minerals and things that are so precious like diamonds and pearls and gold and all these things are buried deep mm-hmm. under the earth. Mm-hmm. It's like it takes work to get it. To get it and yeah. you have to have miners that come and get it. And first they need to call up the, you know, the government. So it's like talking to the parents. Yeah. And then you need to sign paperwork. That's a marriage mm-hmm. license. And then you have to work hard at it to get it. And by the time and then that's like marriage. And like the and so but nowadays you have illegal mining and stuff. People mm-hmm. get it scraping it from the top, you know, like the stuff that's not the good gold or whatever. The real diamonds, and yeah. the, they aren't able to get the real gold or the diamonds that are deep below the earth or pearls like in a seashell or whatever. They're and so a fraction of what they really how can. women need to value themselves mm-hmm. as. Not that you have to be wearing burkinis, which yeah. you know, <laughs> basically look that up. It's a burka. Uh, swimsuit fully <laughs> covered <laughs> we're not saying that but anyway just knowing that you are valued and you don't need to share all the goods that should be for your husband yeah. but ryan mm-hmm. do you want to share about that yeah, i was just gonna say i think i heard somebody say once that uh there's a difference between um i guess there's different words for it but being hot versus being beautiful mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. and there's somebody you know if even the world says if you if you dress in a way that's like hot or sexy, you know, for guys, the way that a guy looks at that, and I don't know what's biblical to that and what's not, but a guy looks at it and just it doesn't it doesn't equal marriage material. Mm. It equals mm-hmm. in your head. Home to mama. Uh, <laughs> I hit it and quit it for yeah. like better words. You know, just. Uh, yep. You know, one night stand, it's all, all bad stuff. Yeah. But mm-hmm. uh, that's what you're putting out is that, that you're easy. That I'm, yeah. And it's so, anyways, but I think in the contrast of that, okay, I'll just read this first. It says uh, in First Timothy 2, it says, uh, and I want women to be modest in their appearance. Uh, they should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair by wearing gold or pearls or expensive clothes. For women who claim to be devoted to God should make themselves attractive by the good things they do. Mm-hmm. Women should learn quietly and submissively. I do not let women teach men or have authority over them. Let them listen quietly. For God made Adam first and afterward he made Eve. And it was not Adam who was deceived by Satan. <clears throat> The woman was deceived and sin was the result. But women will be saved through childbearing, assuming they continue to live in faith, love, and holiness and modesty. Mm, modesty. So, <clears throat> modesty, yeah, and that's what it says at the beginning. So I think the contrast is that you can be modest and beautiful. Mm-hmm. And beauty mm-hmm. isn't something that uh, you lose with age. Like you can, you can see many older women who are Mm -hmm. still who still radiate a lot of beauty Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. because of these things because the things they do the way the lord lives through them yeah and they the good the good that comes out of them yeah and so yeah that's what i'd say about that and then the other thing is uh 
it does say, you know, through accepting your, the role as a mother, I think that motherliness is a good thing mm. and wanting to be a mom and, and coming under submission in quiet and gentle spirit under your husband or your father, or whatever leadership figure you have. That's not to say, like, I know you guys were talking about <laughs> the, the women, even in the church nowadays, who, you know, empowerment of, I mm. forget, boss babes or whatever. Oh, yeah, like the, the <laughs> female but energy, boss babe. Mm. Female mm. energy, yeah. So not to say that, that okay, Proverbs 31 woman is very industrious. Oh, yeah. You know, she mm-hmm. makes clothes for her family. She burns the midnight She'll oil. She'll be all she's, those boss babes. She's known at the city gates. Her husband praises her. And yeah. so I think that all those things are good things, but it shouldn't uh, counteract it can be done in line with these other things that mm. the Bible also talks about. That's why I can about. say mm-hmm. that her husband can praise her because she's not doing it to be like, I want to make more money and this is my money, this is your money, and mm. like I get to do this, this, this. She's doing it for their family yeah. and also because he's telling her to. And I give that example of like even with, you know, to all you haters out there who think that I just do what my dad says and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway i don't respect ryan um but it's funny because like with my dad i realized that it was a good thing of learning to respect my dad like my dad growing up always wanted me to like with my if i wear leggings wear long t-shirts and cover my behind and you know to wear things that are modest or even things with like it sounds legalistic but like my brothers and my dad liked my hair long they're like it's beautiful you have beautiful long hair like keep it and i was like oh my friends are telling me to cut it and they're like that's because they're jealous. Keep it. And so I did that even in a weird way out of a respect thing. But did you want to say, Chris, anything about like modesty or anything for women? Because like these are all triggering words for a yeah. lot of girls. And this is really sensitive. But why do you walk in modesty? I guess. Let me take off my gold hoops first. Yeah. No, just up. <laughs> Remember a tagline you said yesterday oh, was yeah. be the type of. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was. Um, oh, and we were all talking. It was like where I've heard, but it was like, be the person you're looking for. And so is looking, looking for, yeah, be the person you're looking for is looking for. Um, and I've always thought about that too, of just like, okay, like if, um, you know, I want this, like this godly guy who, you know, uh, reveres the Lord and like just different things. Like there's even, I think modesty in men too, of like how they conduct themselves. Um, mm-hmm. and just like, I think even like speech and around other women and mm-hmm. things like that. And those are actually things that I look for. And so I'm like, if I'm looking for that, then I need to be that way too. Like yeah. there's a modesty in like my appearance and my conduct mm. and how often yeah. even I maybe interact with um, the opposite sex and brothers. Like there's, I think modesty can be just a very broad term too of like, it, there's so many facets to it. It's not just tailored to like my gold hoops, and like your appearance, <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's um, inside. yeah. What do you guys think of that too? Like modesty in the sense of just, the different areas it's not just like the physicality clothes i mean i i agree I'm, and i'm glad to actually mention that the modesty in men because people act like men don't have to be modest because mm. men we can oftentimes say vulgar things sometimes we don't read the room like mm. we'll behave in a certain way um and this may not be applicable to all men but you know like being able to conduct yourself around other women and how your approach mm. the way you greet them the way you uh, talk mm-hmm. with them, you socialize with them, how just like your your whole behavior, you have to be very mindful. And I think, you know, a lot of gentlemen don't always know that because sometimes they just grow in a house full of guys. So they're just mm-hmm. like, you know, um, but I grew up with sisters. So my mm-hmm. sister who's older, you know, yeah. told me, Christian, this is what girls respect. This is what girls like. They don't like when you do that. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd be more mindful. Um but yeah, I think it's it's good to know it's it's not this is not like an attack or yeah mm-hmm. like on girls oh you can't you can't do anything like um, I think what we're just trying to say is there's a biblical way of living yeah. and that within that biblical with yeah and with that biblical standard of living um, you know it's contrary to the world yeah um, and that's why I think that was what we kind of threw out at the title was uh, you know don't be a 21st century woman because today's women, you know, it's about my body, my choice. Mm -hmm. It's about um, my rights. I got to have my money. 
Mm-hmm. His money is also my money, but like mm-hmm. some women think that like yeah, it's I not like we don't. I can do it better. Yeah. There's no yeah. the idea of a partnership, uh, or like being in unity where two become one. Um, yeah. That or, idea or is like very headship, separated headship. now. Yeah. Headship, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. my advice, because we have to wrap it up, and you guys can give your closing thoughts for women, is before you dress in the morning. And I've had to think of this because my husband does this: is asking the Lord. God, what do you want me to wear? Not saying, I think God would be fine with it, but truly, would you, are you wearing this to impress someone this, someone with this outfit? Or are you wearing this because I just want to be comfortable and it's more comfortable wearing less or whatever, or I don't want to wear a bra. Like that's how a lot of women are nowadays. And do you really want, even though you're like, well, my, the Christian brothers should look away. Yeah, they can look away, but think of the bad witness and talking to Christian women. You are to worldly guys seeing oh this is a christian girl and she's dressing like this it's Mm. a bad example first of all and then you're also just kind of exposing yourself like there are some perverted people out there and Uh, scary people uh. and it's like you shouldn't be doing that even if you're like well they need to deal with their struggle and that well you need to care about your brother in christ Mm. and do your part and ask the lord god why am i dressing this way am i dressing to attract other like girls and like like if you well, not attract other girls. Well, uh, hopefully you don't struggle with homosexuality. But meaning like girls like to impress other girls with their outfits, like what they wear, name brands and that, which guys don't care about. But just making sure that you are addressing even modesty is with not trying to be flashy or trying to be showy, doing it in a way where you can still be cute um, and look good, but still being okay with, you know, like how Ryan always is, is like, I want him to know that I'm saving everything for him. You know, like he gets to see me and I'm not trying to impress anyone else into him even before we're married. Like you appreciated that. And so that was like really cool that my dad and my family trained me that way. But I mean, this isn't for condemnation. It's for uh, encouragement and exhortation to, to live like this, like the Bible says to live as a woman because <clears throat> it is... To the man who's running after Jesus, it is very attractive. Yeah. Everybody else is going to call you crazy, but hmm. uh, Jesus told us that would happen. So it's mm-hmm. okay. You know, it's to be expected and um, embraced even, you know. And uh, I would just say that, yeah, don't don't feel condemnation if you feel like you don't match up to the things we talked about or read. But just realize, like Keith Green says, you know, it's by the grace of God that I stand. Amen. Amen. And so it's apart from that grace, we all mm. would be in hell. And so yeah, uh, I think just uh, search the word and find out for yourself what, what the Lord says about what it means to be a, a woman walking with him and uh, ask him to search you and teach you how, how to be because it's... Uh, a woman under submission to the Lord and to her husband is a very beautiful thing. And that's what I would say that the world tells women that it's, that is different. The, the world says that a woman under submission is stifled and extinguished. Mm-hmm. But I think, according to God's word, that that's where, really where a woman yeah. blossoms. Yeah. You can't do it apart from from the Lord, you know, apart from his Holy spirit. Mm. And so just to know that, um, like seek the Lord above everything. And then also just know that you can't do this on your own. Even all of us, like Mm. Mm -hmm. that we're sharing this with you. It's not that we've attained. It's not that we're perfected in it. It's that Mm. we strive daily to be Christ like, and we're going to fail and we do fail and we love each other to call each other out. Mm. If we do, you know, like no one's perfect, but we are doing our best to abide in Christ and to be Christ-like and to keep those accounts short with the Lord where it's like the Lord shows us something that we would be repentant, that we would be quick to be like, okay, Lord, like change this in me. If it's not glorifying you, if it's not honoring you, then, you know, change it. And Mm -hmm. I think also in that is like dying to self, like even me as a Mm -hmm. single woman of the dying to self of how do I prefer my brother? You know, like, is this what I say? Is it going to stumble? What I wear, is that going to stumble? Even if I think it might be okay, it's like, I'm not going to talk about these things. I'm not going to share these certain things. And so I think that's also like Mm. part of like the modesty and also like a guarding of the heart too, of just like, it might be totally fine, but go the extra mile of preferring the other and 
that's what we're called to do as the Christ followers is to die to self. You know, it's a mm. daily thing to pick up your cross and to die to yourself. You're crucifying your flesh. Yeah. You're crucifying what you think is like, okay, it's normal. The world's doing it, but we are called to, to be otherworldly. Yeah. You know, exactly. So. Part of the modesty and what you were saying, not letting all the goods out for, <clears throat> for all to see is mm-hmm. also, I would say having boundaries in your, what you said reminded me of having boundaries in who you talk to. Yeah, yeah. flirting. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Flirtatiousness. Oversharing. Because you can mm-hmm. dress modestly or... Words, be seductive. Or whatever, mm-hmm. but yeah, but be seductive with in words and mm-hmm. in actions. Yep. Um, mm. And just saying, oh, I'm just friends, mm-hmm. you know, with these people. But really you can't have guys no. and girls friends, you no. know. Mm-hmm. Can't can't have close close friends, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Either either one side ends up liking, liking the other, other. and so okay. just having good boundaries in your life, mm-hmm. I think that's good. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and um, we also wanted to just say that um, some other podcasts that I'd recommend that talk about this and things like for family is "Ask for Me in My House." That's with Jordan and Melena Sisiati and she has a good like thing on modesty because she was before dressing immodest um and not realizing it and how the lord has changed her and she's like a mom of three and she's only 26 or 27 so it's just really cool and we're gonna try to get them on the podcast we have so many other guests coming up la marzuli and all that so get excited we love you guys so much so thankful for you and um if you haven't already please make sure to like subscribe and share this video uh, if you like to listen to us wherever your podcast just type in calvary conversations and also you can follow us on instagram for our behind the scenes um at calvary conversations and if you guys would like to uh let us know who you would like to have on the podcast you guys can go to our website calvaryconversations.com and it's under request i think i don't know but go to our website calvaryconversations.com or dm us or dm us Mm -hmm. uh we'll also be selling merchandise so get ready for that some t-shirts and Mm -hmm. stuff and we're just very grateful for all the support that you guys have given Calvary Conversations. Make sure to share this video with a friend. But also what you can do is leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And another thing is this is a listener support a podcast. If you would like to donate, whatever amount you feel led by the Lord, you guys can do that in the description below that says donate. Thank you guys so much and God bless. Bye.